Welcome to Community Watch, and today we'll be discussing jobs with the Department of Juvenile Justice. Stay with us. Community Watch starts now. Welcome to Community Watch. Greg, how are you doing? Fine, brother. And yourself? Well, I'm all right. This gotcha. All right. So um, I know that this area of conversation today, uh, Department of Juvenile Justice, is something that you've had a great deal more experience uh, than I have with. Uh, so you're the point man today. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. Let me stop you right there. Let me clarify that. <laughs> My experience with DJJ was not as a youth, but in a working no, capacity. Professional experience. <laughs> professional experience. Uh, see, I didn't even consider that. See, you, you automatically, you know, well, never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, our guest today is Terry Lee talent acquisition manager for the department of juvenile justice welcome to the show thank you so much thank you guys for having me um and based on my lesser body of knowledge uh here i wonder and i'm guessing we may have a few viewers uh, who also are not as familiar with uh, djj if you could tell us a little bit about the Department of Juvenile Justice, the the size and scope of it, and and, and what its purpose is. Sure, um, the Department of Juvenile Justice is a uh, twenty five facility um, state agency that houses youth in both short term and long term um, housing facilities. Um, we specialize in kind of trying to rehabilitate re rehabilitate the youth back into society through different programs, um, through our social services programs, um, our community outreach programs, as well as um, other programs that we partner with, such as Home Depot, um, to help our youth become more acclimated to how they should act and respond in society. Uh, 25 facilities, that's huge. Yeah, yeah we have uh, 25 facilities and 96 community offices. So our community offices um, are like our probation offices um, where the youth um, that were in long-term facilities uh, work with those uh, probation officers in order to make them ready to live in society and get jobs and finish their uh, GED if they haven't done so. We also have a, um, a school district within our agency. So um, uh, we are one of Georgia's uh, school districts. So with that 25 facility, is that statewide? Where, what's the, the geographic area we're talking about? Yeah, we're, we're talking statewide. So um, we have 25 facilities across the state. Um, we have about uh, six in Metro Atlanta and then uh, about uh, five or six up north. And then the rest are scattered throughout the, uh, the southern part of the state. Hmm. Mr. Lee, uh, Justice, and, uh, and we'll get into some things y'all have coming up, but just as you was mentioning that, um, what I guess what determines long-term and uh, short-term placement in YDC? Uh, absolutely. So um, the ter determining factor is just the severity of the offense that the youth um, commits. Um, so there are a variety of offenses, as you all know, that um, anyone can uh, uh, commit. But if you are 17, 80, the age of 17 years or younger, um, uh, we house you based on the offense and based on your age. And um, because I do have some experience as Doc talked about. Professional, I, professional. Professionally. Professional <laughs> I do know you have what they call RYDC, which I'm assuming is regional YDCs, youth detention centers. Correct. And you have just uh, youth detention centers, I guess, that are just local. So what's the difference between a regional one and just a local YDC? 
Um, so the regional YDCs um, are our long-term facilities and the uh, YDCs are our short-term facilities. Yeah, because I know over the years in different capacities, I've worked with students that were uh, in a YDC that was sent to an RYDC and then uh, sent back, you know, uh, to a YDC to be released. Right. Um, and I didn't know the I didn't know primarily that the RYDCs were for long term, which makes which makes sense. Right. And um, even with that, I think uh, a lot of people don't understand that you say y'all have school systems that yes. 25 facilities, you know, I don't know how large the number, the makeup is, but y'all serve a lot of students on a, from an educational perspective. Absolutely. Um, and I don't think people realize that, that when kids go to YDC, they still have to go to Georgia accredited schools uh, with teachers. And, you know, so it's a school system within the system. I don't think people realize that. Absolutely. Yeah, we have our, our own school system um, that is accredited by the state of Georgia and um, that we do give high school diplomas and uh, we have GED testing and training. How many, uh, how many students are we talking about statewide in, in the system? Uh, we, have quite, we have quite a few students. Uh, the, the number kind of changes every day just uh, based on um, re release or not release. And then the number also changes based on the um, standard high school diploma track versus the GED track. You know, I'm wondering, um, with YDC, the job scope. Um, mm -hmm. I know when I first come, when I came up, when I got out of the military, and the one of the first, the first job I took out to the military was I was a correction officer at Hayes State Prison, mm -hmm. and it was only as a correction officer that I, you know, that you get to see behind the screen, behind the scene, you know, kind of lift the, uh, the veil and the amount of jobs that exist in corrections. Period, youth and adult. It was like there's a lot of jobs. I mean, it's, it is a it is a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a business uh, aspect to corrections that I didn't realize existed prior to working there. Uh, just from uh, feeding, security, uh, so personal hygiene supplies, it, it was just so many different things that were needed that I never thought about. Like who provides those services, and. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about today at some point is the fact that there are jobs in YDC in corrections, uh, particularly um, DJJ, Department of Juvenile Justice. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was interesting because in a time when there are a lot of people are filing for unemployment, there are quite a few jobs. I mean, there are a lot of jobs within the Department of Juvenile Justice that need to be filled. Absolutely, um, we we have we have quite a few jobs that we are um, trying to get filled, and those jobs are essential jobs. So it's really important that we get those positions filled, um, and at the same time convey the message that uh, the job is meaningful, and um, there is actually a work behind the job that is much more than a correctional officer. Um, it is. Um, helping a youth uh, become more than uh, what they are when they enter the facility. And so um, we, we pride ourselves in having some of the best um, JCOs, um, juvenile correctional officers, and, and everyone that works in the facilities. But our juvenile correctional officers have a task of um, being a, a role model as well as being, you know, the the overseer of these youth in the facility. So I'm, and, and Greg, I know you have a better sense of this, I'm sure, than I do, but the mission, if, if that's the right word, of the Department of Juvenile Justice would be to help the kids in the system, the students in the system, um, get to a place where they can function trouble-free 
Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, is there a is there a sense, or or do you have a sense of how successful uh, the the Department of Juvenile Justice has been in a, accomplishing that mission? Um, so I, I don't have any um, specific numbers. Um, but I can say over the years, I've been at the department for um, a little over a year now. And um, the, th- the thing that is, has been most impactful to me is uh, how much we actually do to impact the youth inside of the facilities. Um, so whether they're in a long-term facility and um, they won't be released until um, they're 18 or they may not be released at all, um, or whether they're in a short-term facility and they're there for six months, um, the services that we offer to um, help stimulate their mind and um, allow them to mature and grow um, are some of the most impactful things that I've seen. So, for example, um, we have different aquatic centers inside of our facilities. Um, like I said, we have, we've partnered with um, Home Depot to create a uh, job training pipeline um, for youth as they're being released um, to help them with resume building, to help them with um, skills outside of the facility. And, and then our, our natural framework of having community offices Um, which really are what they are. They are community offices that allow for um, the youth to uh, be exposed to things that are in the community so that they're prepared when they leave the facility. So you would say, because it sounds like to me, uh, it is not simply a place to put uh, students who are causing trouble uh, just to get them out of the mainstream, but it is a, a real way to, to help them develop and learn and grow and, and to improve their situation. Their situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. A, a, a lot of the youth that come in are, well, I'll just say all of the youth that come into our facilities are coming from diverse backgrounds of um, maybe uh, being homeless or uh, one parent household or just in a situation that they were born into that they don't have um, or they never have had exposure to anything but that situation. So um, we, we use our, plat- our agency as a, a place for them to develop and grow and sometimes even a place for them to rehabilitate and um, remove them from situations where um, where they had no control in being in and placing them in situations that can foster growth and progression and maturity. Mr. Lee, um, you know, piggying back on what Doc just said, I, I, I think I'm assuming that one of the challenges that y'all face is that so many people, parents, community people, kind of paint YDC um, as a place where you see quote unquote bad kids um, and the connotation even in the community is not a place so much of rehabilitation, uh, how do we help these young people, but I think so many of us in the community kind of paint YDC as a place where bad kids go when the true mission of YDC is, is not just housing troubled youth, but helping, trying to help rehabilitate them. Um, I know we only have about 30 seconds left before we have to take our first break. But when we come back, I would like to talk about that image because I think part of what we can do as a community is start looking at YDC uh, and Department of Juvenile Justice as more than just a place you see in quote unquote bad kids, sure. but look at it as a community resource. Absolutely. That, uh, can be and should be used in a way to help these young kids mature and transition back into the local community. Because uh, I can tell you from my previous experience, um, working with adult corrections and juvenile corrections, uh, the community aspect has a lot to do with it. But we got to take a short break and we'll be right back before Community Watch right after this. 
your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Here we are talking with Mr. Terry Lee, who is the Talent and Acquisition Manager for the Department of Juvenile Justice. I think I got your title correct. You got it right. Uh, before we went on break, I had brought up the fact that I think as a community, how we perceive YDC also affects the youth. Uh, so many times I, in my dealing with social services, through defects, through schools, uh, through different capacities, you hear people say, you know, they just need to be locked up. These kids just need, they can't need to be locked up. And instead of seeing YDC, because you do have adult corrections, we're talking about adults who are fully formed and who have made decisions for a variety of reasons, they are being locked up. But when it comes to youth, even though YDC serves, serves in that capacity, mm -hmm. YDC also has a mission to try to rehabilitate these youth. So it's not just about we just sending you to jail and throw away the key. It's about we sending you somewhere because you're not able, in my mind, to function properly in society. But while we send you here, we're providing you with the skills and resources to try to help you mature and grow so that you can go back into society and be productive. And I think that image is so important, but that's my perspective. How, what, from your position, how do you see that dynamic working out? Um, so the, the community is definitely um, needed and, and a resource for us at the Department of Juvenile Justice. And um, the, the picture that is painted in the community um, may be sometimes a little um, skewed in terms of the way we approach um, the youth and the facilities. I think that um, being a, a younger man myself and, and us all having been um, raised in, in the South, presumably, um, we've all had encounters with um, not being everything our parents wanted us to be, right? Um, so we've all had instances where we did things that we should not have done. We've gone places that we should not have gone. And, um, but that doesn't mean that we're terrible people or that we were ter terrible kids. We were just fortunate enough to have parents that would correct us in the moment so that we wouldn't do it again. And so in many instances, the youth um, do not have the same opportunities um, that we have been um, blessed and fortunate to have. And so um, the facility is not um, a place just for terrible youth. The facility is a place for us to help um, rebuild um, and reconstruct uh, what the youth, who the youth are, and help them have experiences that will allow them to grow and develop. And so, yeah, some of them, you know, they've done some stuff that they should not have done, said some things that they should not have said, um, but we're using this as a launching pad to improve who they are so that they can um, improve what our nation is. And so uh, we, we, we really invest um, lots of resources and time into our youth. And so that's the picture we want the community to see. We want the community to see that a lot of our youth come in one way and leave a completely different way. I think a lot is painted around um, who they are going in, but not so much is painted around who they are coming out. Well, uh, Mr. Lee, I understand that the Department of Juvenile Justice is hiring. Yes, we are hiring. <laughs> um, so we are hiring, and um, the last community community event that we had that we were able to partner um, with the community was actually a um, job fair. And so last August we had a job fair, and 
um, in Metro Atlanta at, at a uh, church, a Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ in Metro Atlanta. And that church partnered with us to host um, our first um, hiring event. Um, and we were able to interview um, 1,000 people um, on the spot that day for our open jobs within Metro Atlanta. So um, we've kind of hitched to the to the heels of that experience and due to COVID-19 uh, we can't have an in-person event um, where we can really be face to face with the community um, but we're having a virtual hiring event and that virtual hiring event will um, be o over the course of three days based on um, where the facility is located throughout the state and we will be hiring interviewing and hiring on the spot for um, our essential positions. Um, so those essential positions include our juvenile correctional officers, our housekeepers, and our food service workers. And um, those, like I said, those positions are at all 25 of our facilities across the state. And uh, we're trying to make sure that we have the adequate amount of staff to be able to serve our youth and um, give back to uh, who our youth are becoming inside of the facilities. Now, I know from uh, speaking um, with Director Gail Wise here locally at the uh, Bob Richards YDC mm -hmm. that they have quite a few positions that they are hiring for. So for our local residents, I mean, they're hiring. Like you said, uh, yes. prepare to hire, hire on the spot for the right candidates. Mm -hmm. And these are st state jobs, correct? Yes, um, these are state jobs. So uh, state jobs come with state benefits, right? So um, you, uh, as a full-time employee, you're eligible for um, a pension, um, which is vested after 10 years, a 401k, um, full del uh, dental um, um, health, and vision insurance. Um, and then there are some other insurances that you can opt to opt in or out of. Um, that includes um, maybe uh, legal insurance or uh, just lots of different uh, benefits and opportunities for you to take advantage of as an employee of the state, uh, of state of Georgia. State of Georgia is probably one of the best employers um, that there are because we have so many benefits and so many resources that our employees can tap into. And um, as a state employee, you can um, transfer from department to department um, and gain valuable knowledge and experience um, that way as well. So um, not only with the Department of Juvenile Justice, but we partner with other um, departments to ensure that every state employee has the chance that they would like to have with, for their career. Now, uh, one thing uh, you didn't mention, which, which is very important, it was to me and it still is to me now, is paid, paid leave. Yes. Vacation. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Vacation time, uh, sick leave. Yes, sir. Um, all of those are, are very important leaves. Um, uh, we have uh, paid holidays. Uh, throughout the calendar year, I believe it's 14 paid holidays. Um, and so um, if, you're, if you're working on a paid holiday because you have an essential position, you're compensated for that. So uh, we just have, uh, we have lots of different benefits that uh, employees, uh, potential employees can take advantage of. You, you know, when I was uh, talking uh, to Ms. Wise and some, some of the people I know out there, you know, it just dawned on me, you know, that, you know, we're we in a time where all time high unemployment due to COVID-19. And yet here you have an industry that actually have, uh, especially in this area, well paying jobs uh, with benefits, which is so important right now for so many families. And so uh, I, I will admit that working as a correction officer myself, correction is, is not for everyone uh, because it, you do. I believe you do have to have the right temperament and the uh, right desire to effect change in the people you're working with. Um, but these are state paying jobs mm -hmm. uh, with good benefits. And you would think in conventional wisdom that uh, no job would be unfilled uh, at this moment. 
and, and maybe that's just maybe people don't know and that's why we're doing the show but uh I, I i'm i'm glad to know that you know the department of juvenile justice you know is reaching out and you know in doing job fairs letting people know that we do have jobs because i i, I think you people want chances and opportunities and here's one because i know i didn't stay in corrections but the opportunity to move up Absolutely. and progress uh, while if you stay in that field is there i know people that uh started in corrections with me, I left and pursued something else. And they went on to become, you know, lieutenants and captains and other things. Uh, the director herself, Miss Gail Wise here locally, I, I worked with her and she was a counselor. Now here she is a director of a facility. Absolutely. So I do know the opportunity for growth in the Department of Correction exists. And it's a great start for, uh, for, for a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, so as you said, our, our progression ladder is um, almost uh, limitless. Uh, so you, you start as a JCO1. Um, once you go to the uh, JCO training, which is the BJCOT training um, that we host, um, six months later, you get, you get a promotion to a JCO2. So um, we're not holding you back. We're not holding you back at all. Then once you stay in that position for um, some time, uh, you can go to Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain, um, even to a assistant director of program, assistant director of security, facility director, um, regional administrator, um, assistant deputy commissioner, deputy commissioner. Uh, the, the, the opportunities are limitless. You just have to stick with it and um, really put your heart and soul into um, impacting and improving the youth that are in our facilities. Um, and, the, and the sky is the limit. The sky, the sky really is the limit. Mr. Lee, if you could uh, give us a sense, as you mentioned, uh, a broad range of, of job availability. Um, what are the uh, requirements in terms of education or experience for these jobs? Sure. So um, for all of all of the jobs that we're interviewing for next week, the uh, juvenile correctional officer, the um, food service worker, those minimum requirements are high school diploma or GED. Um, they do not even require experience. We um, understand that uh, in order to gain experience, um, you have to get experience. So we're willing to um, invest into the individuals who would like to work with us and train you to learn the job that you're applying for. Um, also with uh, a the housekeeper, there is no education requirement or experience requirement because again, we're willing to invest into those who are willing to invest their time into us. Well, we only have a minute and a half or so left. So if you could tell us where people need to go or look if they want to be part of this job fair. Sure. Um, to be a part of this job fair, you just go to um, DJJ Hiring event dot eventbrite dot com um, and you can register there for um, the hiring event um, but say you're not able to interview next week for the hiring event um, if you just go to uh, www.teamgeorgia.gov backslash careers um, you can always access all of our vacant and open positions um, on that website um, and uh, you also can visit our djj.georgia.gov website um, if you like to contact us um, personally um, to send us your resume or something or get some type of guidance. That's great. Well, I, I appreciate you being with us and telling us about it and hope you will come visit us again soon. Thank you so much for having me to you both. And thank you, everyone, for being with us on Community Watch. We'll see you next time.